joining us today on Millennial Talk, where we discuss issues affecting millennials and give recommendations on how to deal with them. Today, we are going to be talking about business. Last week, we talked about the cleaning business, and we had Naomi come here, share our experience with us as someone who runs a professional cleaning business. Today, we will be no different. If you have a business, obviously, or you don't have a business and you're looking for how to strategize and you know make more income or better yourself today will be no different my name is bukumi adejobi and with me here is josephine josephine hi, hi bukumi well, how are you doing it's it's great i mean today there's a bit of goosebumps because you, you know what day it is yeah <laughs> the end of the so, year <laughs> yeah yeah all right um, we're going to be talking today about business and coaching for your business, strategy for your business, um, all the details you need. You know, you can't just start a business without proper planning, without having the right strategies in place to scale your business. If you do plan to scale later in future. So who is a business coach? Someone who can take your business from where it is right now to where you want it to be. You need professional experience. Many entrepreneurs are not great managers, but they have good ideas. You know, they know how to you know bring their ideas to life but they need someone to help them you know bring those ideas to life tailor them accordingly to ensure that they get you know the best benefits from you know all the processes in their business oh. yeah and that's that's actually quite true um, business coaches can sometimes be mistaken as mentors they are two very different people the difference between a business coach and a mentor is that a mentor gives you advice on how to go about the things that you do but a business coach they help you achieve set goals. You know, they, they guide you towards achieving these goals. And, you know, business coach, they serve as those who see the blind spots, the things that you do not see as a business owner. You might be blinded to a lot of things because of like, oh, this is my business, so let me handle it my way. Yeah, <laughs> you know, a lot okay. of business. Well, you see, because of that, we might be blinded to certain things. And these coaches help us see the blind spots. And they also serve as a compass towards guiding us to achieve success on all our set business goals. And today with us to emphasize on this subject and, you know, give, throw more light, give us all the, the oil <laughs> in order to have uh, be a better, better business owner. We have with us Precious Joy. She is a business coach and strategist and she will be giving us all the juice on how business owners would be able to take your business from one point where it is right now, as Bukumi said, to the next level. Welcome to the show, Precious Joy. Thank you very much, Jason, and thank you, Bukumi. Thank yeah, you for having Yeah, it's nice me. to have you here, thank and um, you're very pretty and so Yeah, I like the, <laughs> the jacket. <laughs> it's popping. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so looking at business, why did you decide to become um, a business person? I know before we started, you said you, you um, were into customer experience. And ensuring that you know businesses you know do their processes accordingly so why did you decide to go you know to become a strategist and how has that been so far for you okay so thank you once again for having me here Justin and Bukumi. so my name is precious joy Urupe. um i am a customer experience strategist and what i do for businesses is i help them to create the right experiences that can across channels, across their different touch points and interactions, whether digital channels, physical channels, and um, basically just to ensure that they meet the expectation of their customers and they also meet their financial targets because I do not see a reason why you would run a business a business, not a non-profit. Even non-profits, they make, they make money. money. <laughs> How much more you say you are in business and yet you are not um, being able to increase your revenue. So hmm. for me, um, I started to look at exactly how do you make... Um, how do you make your customers feel your buyers your mm -hmm. end users and then how exactly do you make those in-house your employees how do you make them feel because yeah. whether you like it or not you are the first point of contact that customers mm -hmm. would have in, that they will get in touch with and so if they do not have a great experience with you you don't treat them right right they don't um feel engaged that customer engagement, guess what? They are going to like, you know what? I don't want to deal with business with these people anymore. I'm going to take my money somewhere else. And so for me, what inspired me to start was the fact that experiences sums up everything in life. Yeah. Okay, so does that 
Definitely. Yeah, that definitely covers it. Yes. Uh, as for me, asked what, how has it been for you so far? So for me, in terms of how it's been so far, it's been beautiful, and the most rewarding journey. I'm a Christian, so after my salvation, mm -hmm. it's been the most rewarding journey for me, because I love to treat people right. When you treat people badly in my presence, I might not say a word, but I have taken note of something and I'm just okay. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about people. Mm -hmm. How do you treat people? So it boils down to even the security man, the house help, your nannies in your home. The way you treat them is the way you treat your staff when you have a company, whether yeah. you like it or not. Very it's true. a state of mind. So for me, I'm all about the transformation of your businesses. But how can we transform your businesses? It is to work with your mindset first. Hmm. Take it from this level to, oh, I want to start earning like a million dollars, 10 million dollars. No problem. What we have to do is to first work with your mind. Your mind takes the basis of everything, right? Mm -hmm. So before mm -hmm. we can transform that business, start here. So for me, how it's been is, it's been the most rewarding journey of my life, mm -hmm. working with um, businesses, companies across sectors, when you talk about like um, media, you talk about real estate, you talk about um, automobile, pharmacy, like pharmaceutical yeah, pharmacy, industry, yeah. mm -hmm. you talk about fashion, you talk about food, <laughs> it's been beautiful. Right. And seeing the impact you are having that, oh, okay, this was the challenge that they had, now you help them to solve this with the right process and planning now they are on to this okay this is the next phase or even you being able to foresee a challenge and say this is likely to happen hmm. so we've got to put this process in place to ensure that we are able to overcome that challenge when it comes so yeah. for me it's been the most rewarding journey because it deals with people hmm. yeah. and true. the most impact you can have in this life has to do with people, with people. yeah, yeah that, that's, that's true so that's for true. my clients to even trust me and tell me take me into their personal yeah. life honestly when i started i was like too much personal ah, life <laughs> what's up now how far <laughs> i say i understand what <laughs> but it's because they trust you yeah and trust can never be bought with money Hmm. I can only tell you my secret if I feel safe. Yeah. And again, it's about people. As a customer, do I feel safe? Mm -hmm. When you as a business owner, you have my loyalty. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens in this life, I stay loyal to you. Yeah. So that level of transformation, that level of impact grows in people's lives and their businesses I don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. right. I do not. Right. That brings me to uh, my question, accountability. Now, I know that the, one of the critical roles of a business coach is to hold their um, trainer or tra their trainees as like, they hold them accountable on everything, not just business, but character as well, as you have said. So, um, I mean, what has your success rate been like? And what is the secret to your success? That's like okay. very important because people would want to know, like, let's just take it as a selling yourself kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. I mean, what are... The, the, I know there are challenges, but mm -hmm. what has your success rate been like? Have you been able to successfully see a very, you know, you know, the reward for you is like, oh, wow, I started working with this person five years ago and this person is transformed mm. into a different person. Mm. So what has it been like for you and what's the secret behind it? Thank you very much for that question. Um, I love that you used the word five years. Mm. Do you know why? Because a lot of entrepreneurs, they want... No, no. Today, today. <laughs> I want to, I'm any hundred thousand. I want to make it like a million dollars. How? Magic? Mm -hmm. How? There's a process to everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, transformation. I don't, the word transformation for me is everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not about, I just want to make money. Mm -hmm. I'm about transforming you that whether I am there with your business or not, you are self-sustained, hmm. needing not my aid or support. So in as much as some people would say, but how are you going to make money as a, how are you going to make money? Because now you're going to work with your um, companies, work with the companies to ensure that they don't need your support anymore. That is where the joy is. I was able to do this for you. And so I can guarantee in the next two years, this process 
consistent that we've set you don't need any no issues or we can say okay within the next one year you will be fine mm-hmm. then we can come back the next one year and see okay what's up what's up what's up so what the thing is my um the secret basically is for me your character so when i know i study people a lot i can just be here and i'm i'm just watching but you never i could be reading a book but i can tell your movements i can tell a lot of things but i'm not seeing the world and so it is um there are times where i had uh, okay not times there are times where let me use the word there are times i had gone to a place a company i was meant to like train work with for a couple of like maybe some months and then um i'm just there oh i'm waiting for this person but i know the person is not around and so what am i doing i just want to see how you guys are working I just want to see your culture. I just want to see your system of operation. How you treat yourself when your boss is not around. Hmm. So I am waiting for the boss. To come but the and boss is not around. <laughs> but you think I'm here to collect the deal. But I already have the deal. And so guess what? Just so I know when, I, when I'm introduced as your trainer, you're shocked like, ah, but this person I don't get. But I already now know how to work with you. Mm. what your character is to an extent do you get and so when it comes to my secret in terms of accountability i can be really demanding mm. i'm not the nicest of persons <laughs> in that <laughs> the reason why i'm not the nicest of persons is again is about you who you become like for you to get to that level where you command influence and authority there's got to be some level of demand from who you are. Mm. There's got to be some level of discipline, accountability to yourself, not even to the company where you're working. So it's about who am I? Okay, for example, I am the customer service executive. I am the, um, what word? I'm the digital marketing executive of this company. I'm the head of uh, human resources or HR manager here and the thing is again even if you are who do you become on the job so that is where for me it is the discipline I can be demanding even to when I know you can do it I'm not the nicest I'm like you're telling me I'm like no that's an excuse I'm not I'm like that's an excuse and so my but that's an excuse so that's an excuse is like what does this person want from me what does this person want from me but there is that yes, thing. There's a push. There is that yes. Yeah, there is that the thing in you in. that you must because there, there's Brian Tracy's book. No excuses. No excuses. Stop giving yourself. Uh, I won't come. Uh, 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 that is why uh, the customer didn't pay. Okay, did you send a text? Uh, I didn't remember. I will. Okay, did you reach out to them on IG? Did you reach out to them on Facebook? Just something until the person responds. To so for me, it is, I will demand of you till I know because the people that are the big deals of the world, the top CEOs, they are not, they didn't come from heaven that way. Yeah, they trained they, themselves to be that. that yeah. And when you listen to them, a lot of them, there was a time in August this year, I studied like one book a day for 29 days. And then in September, I started to study. So I, I didn't study one book. Either. I read. There's a difference between you reading and then you're studying. In mm-hmm. September, I started to study. So the thing is, was it convenient? No. Was it important? Yes. Was it necessary? Yes. Because of where you are going, you can't play small. So for me, it is that accountability is I will demand of you. And when you know that I do not take your excuse, and when you're talking to me and it's bouncing off like that's an excuse. That's an excuse. So when you know, I would always tell you it's an excuse. Yeah, you, you would want to. Yeah, I want to do. So for example, your target, your boss gives you, okay, you know what? We've got to ensure we bring in at about 30 million naira monthly into this company. Mm-hmm. And you've not even achieved a million. And eh, eh, boss is not, you know, we have new customers. Eh, you know, eh, eh, eh. The eh, eh, it's an excuse. I don't, how can, okay. You are facing challenges. You can let us know you have challenges. Then the question should be, how, how can you advise solve, yeah, that I go yeah. about this? So yeah. what do you suggest? Not a, they're not all, they're, what is that? 
I would demand of you because the people that are there, they are not better than you. <laughs> you know, talking about you know, demanding of people and keeping people accountable. Now, what for a business, you know, let's move away a bit away from customer service and move to the business. Too. Yeah. Now, what are those things that you think that businesses need to have in place in order to go to the next level? I try to be business, maybe, um, let's use this place for an, as an example. And um, I'm looking to, we're looking to grow, we're looking to expand. What are those, when I mean intricate things, when I mean intricate, I don't mean theoretical, I mean practical things that we can put in place or we can employ to ensure that that growth is possible. Okay. So first you have to identify what type of growth you want. Okay. So, for example, maybe okay. in terms of, let's say everybody financial, everybody looking for financial growth and uh, maybe to um, have more let's say subscribers on our platform let's okay say so more customers as, yeah clients and subscribers on our platform let's use that as, as an example okay so customers and then obviously more customers you mm -hmm. bring in more money more money definitely yeah, yeah. so that's so, kind of growth that we so want. first it is the people you have you've identified the type of growth you want yeah the issues a lot of people have is ceos business owners entrepreneurs is they, i just want to go yeah. But so what I want my things? name everywhere. Yeah. But so you've not identified. Yeah. So that's why I like I have to ask what type. Mm. So now that you've identified those two types, one particular goal, which is more customers. Yeah. More customers use the money. So first is are you giving the customers what they want? How can you give them what they want? You have to ensure that you work with your data. What are they buying more from you? So sometimes you might think, okay, it has to do with the features, the features of the product, the features of the product. Let's work, let's develop our products more, the features of the product. But the question is, what if they are cool with the features is just the fact that it is not functional. Hmm. Your website looks good, but what is the functionality of the website? How, when I click on it, like, is it as like, pop, is it fast? Pop, yeah. pop. Is it fast? So that is another question that you should ask yourself. Yeah. So it's not that I can tell you, I love your website, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful, the aesthetics, everything is beautiful. The user interface, great. But let's talk about the experience. Why do I talk about experience? I'll come back to the more customers level um, increase in revenue. It's because, for example, let me get into an intimate relationship. When someone does not treat you right, how do you feel? You're not important. That is what it is in business. It's not business is relationship. It's not difference. I keep telling people that just trust you. People, people keep exactly. saying business is not relationship. I, I say that. No, people need to trust you. They yeah. like you. It's not, it's not so much about what you are selling because there's thousands of it's people that are selling you. Exactly. Things. They have to like you they to be like able to patronize you. They like your brand. They, they, that's why they want to say, oh, I want to give person my money. Mm -hmm. So you so, see, yeah. it is if I feel safe with you again, then you have me for life. That's where your customer loyalty is. That's where that means you've been able to engage me, customer engagement. So again, it now comes to after you've identified the type of growth, you've talked about your data, what are customers buying more, then you find out what exactly interview and find out. Sometimes I tell people, not even sometimes, I like to advise this. You can you want to introduce something new into the market, right? So the old one, test with about half of the customer base you have. Mm -hmm. Or even, let's not use a quarter, half is fine. Mm -hmm. Then the new one you want to introduce, test with half. So you know which of them they want. Because again, you're talking about acquiring customer acquisition. You want to acquire new customers, more customers, to increase your revenue. So if I now know, okay, no, they don't want this new product that we're trying to introduce. They prefer this. The older one. It tells yeah. you what? increase the functionality of, of this. this one then after that you look at your processing process is everything i tell people look at your sales process look at your customer service process very important your tools your resources to ensure that these people that you are that are your potential customers they are converted to customers and then when they are converted they are retained Hmm. So that is where your customer relationship management comes in, in the yeah. sense that it's not, customer relationship management is not just for the customer service or the sales team. That's where a lot of companies get it wrong. Right. So it comes into to the point of the account officer. 
For example, let's say the account officer is one that sends out all the bills, all the invoices, all the receipts. So what if he's not trained in terms of having empathy? Empathy. Hi, how are you doing? How are you doing today? The type of email you are sending. You are just sending me, oh, good afternoon, Mrs. A. Hey, this is your... What is that? That is an insult. You should learn to be emotionally sensitive emotional intelligence towards your customers so another aspect again that we would look at has to do with um what you call let's say for example the human resource manager let's say a customer is coming into the office because whether we like it or not we're saying yeah businesses are going digital but whether you like it or not there's always going to be have, like, physical you no still i actually don't physical. really believe in because it's human beings that control computers yes definitely so, so you still need them at like long so, so do you get so for example let's say a customer is coming let's use a real estate company for example a customer is coming into just say they have a meeting and they're going for um inspection site <laughs> inspection and all and then the hr manager is shouting at for example the driver and i am people sensitive not i know that i am people sensitive mm -hmm. what is, what do you think that i would have of the culture of this organization that you want me to also invest my money in yeah definitely no but I, looking, am but let me, I would like to cut you short there because you know we need to know like what are those other things that businesses would need to know now we've identified the issues we've talked about um the culture mm -hmm. we've talked the about processing, holding, yeah, the process your planning holding them accountable a lot of um that point where um i'm now maybe after i've rendered the same so what are those things that maybe i can do after that point where okay after the whole thing how can i retain them how after your services yes yeah, so how, can, how can i ensure that they come back you know yeah your services might be good but there's too many people doing the same thing that we've said before so how can i ensure that that point where they're where they're going they've gotten their service they can always come back and say oh i will stick with this brand you keep in touch with your touch. customers thank you i was just going to say that so yeah. customer experience again is your touch point every interaction across channels mm -hmm. so there's something called the multi so how do you keep in touch because in nigeria it's, okay for example if you're arranging it, what do you do to keep in touch with them hello good afternoon we're just checking you you don't make them your friends in the past few weeks <laughs> make them your friends okay the companies that i had worked for i still have great relationships with a lot of them most actually the women hmm. i make you my person so you don't feel like i come to you because just of because money. of the money I feel my love, but even if, yeah. even as much as I try to still keep the whole professionalism, I tell people I said, maintain professionalism, but be friendly. That's that's important. How are you today? Oh, Bukumi, how are you doing today? I just thought to check up on you. Hope everything is going well and work is not too stressful. Okay, all right. Please take care of yourself. Have a great day. You know, was that too much? That's actually cool because. You know the funny thing? That can actually result into a business transaction. Oh, I, you know, I That's really that wanted to... I mean, can I tell you something? Yeah. There was a time I worked for a company. I closed, I think it was a deal of about 800,000 straight up. Just because I was like, I haven't heard from her in a Let while. Let me just check on I need to check up on her. She was like, oh, there's this thing that... I saw that you guys posted this, this, this. I was like, oh, okay, ma. Do you mind if I send you some pictures? So, or do you want to send me the pictures? Or should I send you pictures of the new products we have? Then you tell me which you're interested in mm -hmm. and guess what she didn't waste time okay precious joy just tell me exactly when you want me to come in for this 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 deal was closed she made invoice was sent and at the time That's i took it up upon myself to start sending the invoices because again what i said earlier Empathy. because whether you like it or not even if you are the business development person you guys you're the marketing person <laughs> you go to bring in the deals if the person that sends those things out doesn't know the right words to use there's no process no template in terms of when we're sending the first invoice when we're sending a follow-up message in respect to the first invoice when we're sent do you understand when we close the sale what email do we send thing. what message do we send if yeah. it is not properly drafted to suit a great experience of the customer what happens is you can lose that person that and who is the person to blame you that went to bring the customer so for me, again, I tell people, ensure you keep in touch. 
keep in touch. Don't make me feel I am just a business transaction. Don't make me feel you're just about my money. Care about me. Business, when you care about somebody, they will care about you. Okay, straight up giving us lectures. <laughs> we're, we're getting lessons right like, now. This is, this is like school. I'm, I'm just like, I'm just good. Like, I'm no, just well, that's the truth. I'm just like, okay, business so is too. relationship. Yes, it is, actually. So when I care, that person that always calls you, ah, just been, what's up? How have you been? That's the person you remember. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, when you need someone. In fact, even if you don't need their service, you just tell them, please, do you know someone somebody that. that because yeah. you feel like you can trust them for real. Yeah. Because I'm thinking from my own personal experience, if, if a particular brand is always reaching out to me, if I want to buy from something that they sell, that, that's the first brand I'll think of. Oh, they always call me, I like to spend my money there. Because that's where I feel like I'm yeah. at home. It's, so, it's, it's yeah. a natural flow of things. Yeah. But the thing is that, mm -hmm. what we do, we, we're so, we focus so much on we're the, the money. professional angle that we forget that we're playing These with people human are beings. human. Yeah. So yeah. whether you like it or not, yes, we talk about technology, AI coming into play. In fact, one of the, the skills, one of the skills, skills that will be most, that will mostly be in demand in the age when we get into the fourth industrial revolution, tech, AI, is their um, soft skills. Soft skills. So because we have all the art skills, we have all the hardware, mm -hmm. software that's helping us with our mm -hmm. lives. Yeah, that's the true. The most skills that will be in demand are soft skills, empathy physical thinking, mm -hmm. all those things. Like, so you're, you're very spot on. You're so very for me, again, it's about the people. Yeah, so in as much as we have the chatbot, we have every tech system. People, people are so important. At that point, people start, no, there will not be a greater need for a for yeah, love. Because like, when your <laughs> message is always, Automated. Okay, you know that nobody cares tired. about you. Like, yeah, it's, it's like, just it's, an auto message. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I delete most of some, I don't read it anymore because Etel says a lot. You know it's <laughs> automated. <laughs> But the message is automated. Yeah, so you can't even post it. Can't so, it so, but imagine yeah. if, like, for example, there's a business that, yeah, we might have up to 500,000 customers. It's possible. But imagine if there are just some people that are dedicated designated to, to make those calls. calls. Yeah, or maybe the CEO just comes out and do, does a video and sends it Appreciates to them. Appreciates everybody. Ah, just if you have a question. Just, <laughs> even if it's just to say, okay, um, um, January born customers will really love you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And then you display the names of the All people of them. Yeah, on the right. screen. Yeah, just to say it. Just to just like, oh, do, how yeah. do you feel? Yeah, I feel special. Do you Actually, think you would leave my company? <laughs> no, definitely no. not. But I, I have another question. Um, when so it those comes, are just the basics. Yeah, that's, we can't go into that. Definitely. But those are just. We we'll spend the whole day talking about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Actually. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to um these businesses, you I mean you're you're doing everything to grow these businesses. But let's talk about the coaching, the person coaching now. What do you think is the most critical step to take to select the right coach because trust me the only way you can achieve success with all of these things that we have said now is if you have the right business coach or the right mentor for your business you know so how does a um, uh, a business or business owner select the right business coach mm. for their brand because that's the most important thing if you have someone giving you bad advice you know that you're going to failure instead of success so we want success for our businesses mm -hmm. everybody out there you want success for your business so the thing is how do i select the right because people will be like okay so how do i know who's the right coach for me mm -hmm. as a yeah. person so yeah, that's a very important thing we need to address yeah so thank you for that question again because um let's bring it to friendship mm. my trainings are the easiest because i bring it to be people that you know when you want to select a friend you went to secondary school right you went to high school was it everybody that you called your friend definitely not maybe gss1 basic 9 to like 12 you said everybody everybody's your friend. friend yeah but the <laughs> time you, you became self-aware maybe ss1 class 10 mm -hmm. to 12 basic 10 to 12 was it everyone you called your friend? Definitely, Definitely not. not. Why? Because your values didn't align. Right. Because what I stand for, what you stood for, was not what the other person stood for. True. So when you're choosing a business coach, it is what are the values of this person? First, it's not about, wow, this person has worked with, wow, this person has helped. True. Great. But what are your values? Because I do not want to. You might be growing, but you don't want it that on your journey you are associated with a brand. Yeah, that's true because I think that affects a lot of um, It business. does. You are, you, you are so attached to a brand that 
in the future as you are growing then it's time to separate you, you cannot, cannot separate from the because you are the one literally carrying carrying business it, yeah. so the business cannot even go out there and and maybe advertise and make money because they are so associated with a particular brand oh this is this person's person mm. so when the person is not in the picture there's no so but another person. issue is you being associated with that brand later on maybe an issue comes up and your values doesn't align with that then there's a problem there's a problem and it can affect your image true true so for me first the values so make your take your time make research every business owner every entrepreneur every ceo of an organization must be good with research mm -hmm. You don't have to, everybody doesn't have to know or you open your laptop to everybody sees you're making research. It's you. It's your business. So what you should do is find out who this coach, who this coach, who are they associated with? True. True. What are the values of this coach? What are the values of these other people? Because once people know that I am associated with you, what happens is they start to, we are all they in are a together. circle. Yeah. Whether we are in close <laughs> need or, or we are not. Yeah. Yeah. The social media world, the internet is a big world. Mm -hmm. And so what you put there is there. Mm -hmm. So what it means is, for example, you start to have maybe um, someone wants to invest in your organization, mm -hmm. your business later on. And, and so because so of the value this, this person, person they say they don't want anything that deal to is do. out. So anyway. first, your values. Well, how can you manage the social media whereby you're attached to the brand? And the brand, maybe the person, the relationship is severe. How can you now manage your that kind of situation? Yeah, your customers that that know you and inspire you. That brand. Does yeah. it and they you? they buy from that yeah, brand. Yeah, does it does it really affect? Uh, it's going to it still does, affect actually. the brand I because the reason why I started to buy from Justin's so business is because you recommended the business. That's it's because of you that I have a relationship with. It's because of you that I admire. It's because of but you that I trust. Is, is good. Uh, it's still going to affect some way. People think, start yeah. to use a bit once you recommend it's because I trust you, so I'm going to start using her stuff. So, but for some people that they think they believe, okay, I love Justin's skincare product, I love her clothes, I love her shoes, you know what? I'm still going to stay in as much Few as I people. love this person. Mm -hmm. Few, that is what it is. That's it. You but a some. lot of people they just, oh, she's just wow, okay. They're going to order. Yeah, I think that's what happens so, in the age of influencers. Exactly, yes. and the that's internet. Yeah, you that's know. What the thing is, again, be as careful as possible. possible. You, you know, in Nigeria, we don't have boycotting, but abroad, once you associate with one negative thing, people start to boycott you. Yeah. And stop buying. You, you might yeah. lose a billions of dollars in a in a week just because people are boycotting and not buying but any longer. But if you know how to use that to your advantage, your PR strategy is on point. You will be good. Wow, okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll no, do another section no, for but PR that's, sex but that's the truth. I'm not a PR strategist, <laughs> but because of what I do, you have to like be versatile. versatile yeah. So the thing is, when something terrible happens, like you are associated with, you should know how to put your game. Again, when I talked about, you create a, a plan. So when you foresee a let me use the one, the evil day that might come, even if it doesn't come. In business, we say risk management. Yeah. So for example, your brand risk management, management. Mm -hmm. your customer experience risk management. If this is likely to happen, what how do, do we do? do? So that day of war, the day of the battle, when it comes, you already, you sharpened your soul. Your battle you axis. sharpened everything. So it's not the day you say, ah, war is coming wow please can you get the just me please can we start the war is already taking place yeah. and things can happen damages can be done but if you stay prepared because obviously you are in <laughs> you are in the business world mm -hmm. it's a market this is a battlefield people are making money at the expense of other people true so it means you must stay ready whether you like it or not whether you're an influencer or not you must. You're a business owner, CEO, brand, whatever. Stay prepared and stay ahead of your game. Right. That's interesting. Right. I, I, I feel like I, I feel like she has answered the other questions before yes, we said because yes, I was going yes. to ask what the what the golden tip would be for yeah. anyone out there, but that that seems like the golden tip. Yeah. Okay. So stay no, ready and prepared for battle. One. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but one thing is again, please treat people well. Right. I think I think Great you really emphasize on that. 
once whenever you are around me, mm -hmm. the vibe you get from me is top notch. Yeah. Let's remember when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. Uncles' houses. The uncles that we love to come to our house and like the to, that when they want nicely. to eat, we don't mind, they can finish the whole food. Mm -hmm. Are they yeah. not the people that you know they will give you money when yes. you are eating? <laughs> Yes, definitely. True. So when I know that this customer, this brand, the CEO, the staff, the employees, like I step in here, someone sees me, even if he's not the front um, deck person, the person mm -hmm. says, oh, good morning or good afternoon, mm -hmm. or hi, you're welcome, please have a seat. Even if the person is not one of the front line person. Um, um, people, professionals in the organization, do you know how that makes me feel? And the person says, oh, you know what, let me get Bellumi or let me get Toby or let me get um, whoever that is the front deck person to attend to. True. How do you think that would make me feel? That's true. Yeah. So again, please, experiences because more than 40% actually of millennials and Gen Z's, when they find out that you are associated to a social issue that they don't pally with, they are off. They cancel you. They are cancelled. That's the word. You're they don't even want to hear. They don't even want to see. So that place probably on Instagram or Facebook, whatever. They are probably they are going to unfollow you. They don't, Block they don't you, just want whatever. to see. Yeah. I think one of these days we we'll have to discuss um, cancel culture and how cancel culture. Yeah. And it's going to make everybody <laughs> no, not business generally. Yeah, generally. It, does it make sense that because of something you cancel this person? Well, hmm. <laughs> you never know. That's we'll, we'll, we'll another day something. I believe that our viewers have learned a lot mm -hmm. from the conversation, and please do also implement them. Yeah, Even if very you important. Have a business in your personal life, I believe there's so many things that she has said. Precious joy has said. <laughs> that um, you can actually apply even to your personal life. Um, so moving on to the fun, fun time, segment. fun scene. Okay. So what do you do for fun? Outside business coach strategy, okay. data, and you know, customer experience. What are those things that you do? Well, for me, I love like table tennis. I oh, love badminton, interesting. I love volleyball. Sports. Those three sports <laughs> I don't do. And again, I love to just sing. I love to just dance. Um, what else? I love to listen to music. My goodness, I love music. Okay, so he's your best musician. Or what kind of single? Oh, song? sing what us song? a song. What like, song even if it's just like two right lines. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have actually never done this on a business. <laughs> well, that's that's why we're well, different. Like, that's why you leave me out of. Sing, sing. Okay, sing. what? Um, just trying to think of a song. I love you, you love me. We are one big family. With, With a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. you. Ah. Won't you say <laughs> you love me too? <laughs> nice. <laughs> you actually have a good voice, actually. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a quiet woman. Oh, <laughs> no wonder. <Wow>. Corista. <laughs> You can tell. You can tell. Thank you Thank so you much. So, it's been so precious. amazing talking to you. Nice. It's been fun having you on Millennial Talk. And um, we hope to, you know, when we are having a, we hope to have a fire, fireside chat soon where we, are, we have so many people. Yeah. And it's like a round table thing and everybody's talking. Okay, that would be lovely. Yeah. So, it would. so I'm, I'm, going, I'm considering you. So we'll put you in mind. You have <laughs> Definitely. A fireside chat. Um, Thank you so much for joining us this far on Millennial Talk. It's been an exciting year. And the good news for us is that no screen. <laughs> That's okay, guys, we would like to announce that today is the final episode for the year 2021. And we'd like, we, we, we like to appreciate everyone, everyone that has joined yes. us from the beginning of the year. To, our guests. Yeah, our, our guests, guests, our sponsors. Yeah. Everyone who has liked our videos, has shared, retweet, wherever on social media, yes. we say a big thank you to you and we hope that you have a very Merry Christmas and wow. a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. And I get to be the... Yes, you know! <laughs> Yeah. Um, yes, definitely. Thank you so much once again for those who have who have you know, been watching, who have stayed our gang. A gang, our gang. People, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Till next time. Bye. Have a great 2021. Have a beautiful Merry Christmas. Yes.